Hello guys, welcome back to the channel for another Databricks video. Today's video would be about building a simple ETL pipeline using Confluent Kafka and Delta Live tables. Confluent Kafka because it's very common in the industry when we have streaming data and Delta Live tables because it's an amazing framework that helps us build ETL pipelines very quickly and very efficiently without complex code. Of course, you can do the same, you can achieve the same using Autoloader and simple PySpark, but it would be more cumbersome and more time consuming. And of course, there is always a trade off Delta Life tables are more expensive. That being said, you will witness now how easy it is to build a simple, yet not far from a production level data pipeline with Delta Life tables. We are going to have one notebook that is going to receive the data from the Kafka topic and it's going to ingest the data to the bronze layer and to the serial layer and we are going to use streaming delta live tables and on the gold layer which is the reporting layer we are going to build a simple star schema with two dimension tables and one fact table very simple of course but on the gold layer remember this is the reporting layer where the power bi analysts run their analytical queries according to the business needs so let's get down to business Okay guys, here on our Databricks environment, the first thing we need to do is actually ingest data to the Kafka topic. Now, if you are on a big uh, company, there is a dedicated team to ingest data to Kafka, but here we have to do it ourselves. So we generate uh, some fictitious data, order data, uh, actually with order ID column, amount column, ship date, customer name, customer country, payment method and payment status. So about uh, data about at the store, here as you can see in the data we have the order ID column, the amount, the zip date, etc, etc. But one thing to notice, actually a couple of things to notice here, for order ID 5 we have two purchases, two items with different amounts from this guy Larry from Italy. And also here we have four records that they are identical, so let's say somehow something happened and we get duplicates, so we get identical records. We have to drop these duplicates on the server layer because this is where we apply the data quality checks. And here for this order, uh, another example is the amount is zero, which is not valid. So this record should be filtered out, filtered out on the server layer, applying data quality constraints. And this record as well, because order ID is minus nine, which is not valid either. So we have those data, let's uh, push this data to the Kafka topic, we can do this by using df select expression, we provide a key for, but it's not I provided customer name, it's not necessary, you can provide whatever key you want, or you don't, you, you don't have to provide any key at all to be honest, and here for uh, value we use two JSON, two underscore JSON, the struct, we select everything and we need to push the data to the Kafka topic and we can do that by defining format equals Kafka. We have to define the bootstrap servers here and uh, define the topic, of course. Actually, I don't think I created a topic on our Confluent Kafka, so let me interrupt this. Let's go back to our Confluent Kafka, create a topic, topic name, topic underscore test with six partitions, so create a topic and then push the data. And also, as you can see here, we have to provide the username and the password. Now, all this information can be found on your Confluent Kafka if you go into cluster settings. Uh, scroll down to endpoints. This is the bootstrap server, copy this value. If you want the username and password, click on add key under API keys, select next and download and continue. So uh, the key is actually the username here and the password here is the secret. So let's go back to our topic and we should have received some messages. Yeah, I think messages in total. Let's wait to see the data. Give it a second. Yep, you we can see the data here. We have the timestamp, offset, partition, the key and the value. So we push the data to the Kafka topic. Now the next step is actually to consume the data from this Kafka topic. Let me switch to another notebook. 
And here we are going to create a Delta Live table pipeline. Uh, the first thing we need to do is import the DLT library, of course, the SQL functions and the SQL types. I have a, a dimension table here for the local date local table. So usually you have a date dimension table in your database and you read the dimension table from the database to use it as a lookup. Here we, for the sake of this example, I just create a data frame. And the first step is actually create a landing zone. And we can do that by using dlt.view and provide the, on the landing zone, we just ingest the data, <coughs> the incoming data without performing any changes. So here in our uh, landing view, on the inside the return statement, we have to read from the this Kafka topic. We provide again the bootstrap server, the credentials, and we load the data to the view. Now bear in mind when we are using Delta Live tables, we cannot see the data of the Delta Live table views, right? So this is an intermediate step. The, but the key step here is where we load the data from this view straight to the bronze layer. As we said, in the bronze layer, we just ingest the original data without performing any changes at all. We can add the column, a timestamp column, for example, here, and then we select the columns we want. In our case, it's value, topic, and process time type, timestamp. Uh, also, we have this expectation. Remember, Delta Live, live table, tables, uh, the Delta Live tables framework actually provide data quality. Exp uh, is combined with the expectations framework and we can provide data, we can create data quality checks pretty uh, easily. And here we check that the topic is not null. We can provide a name for our table, that's bronze layer and the comment, and we can also provide table properties. Now, if you don't provide a name, we have, uh, by default, it's going to get the function name that you defined here. The next step is ingest the data to the serial layer, and here is where we apply the, our data quality constraints. For example, here, if the order uh, is less than zero, then we have to drop this record. If the customer country is uh, null, we drop this record. If the amount is less than uh, is equals and, uh, less than zero, then we drop this record. Now, DLT uh, framework has a, a lot of uh, different data quality checks that you can perform, expect or drop here we use, but we have expect or uh, fail or just expect. So different cases, you can check uh, the documentation for more information. And here we just use the read stream, dlt.readStream, we read from the bronze layer here. And then we define, actually we filter based on the topic. Usually we have multiple topics, but here we have only one. And we have to unnest the value column. First, we cast it as a string using from underscore JSON. We provide the JSON schema here. As you can see, I have already defined the JSON schema. Order ID integer, amount integer, ship date is string, customer name is string, customer country is string, payment method is string, and payment status is string. And then, we select, we unnest the body uh, column with all the nested columns and we select the uh, topic and process timestamp as well and then we drop the duplicates. Remember, we had four records that were identical records, so we have to drop those duplicates. And then we join based on the lookup table, based on the ship date, um, based on the ship date and the date column from the lookup table and then we select the date key from this lookup table that we have defined up here. Now, we want the date key. We perform a left arrow join. Apparently, that's a lookup table. But we want the date key in order to partition the serial layer based on the date key. Usually, you partition the tables based on a date key or a date column or a timestamp column. And then we select the final columns we want. I have already defined the final columns on this list. So how can we run this notebook here? We cannot run it with a simple cluster because we are using Delta Live Tables framework. So here under Delta Live Tables, you create a pipeline, ingest pipeline, let's uh, call it. Then you select the notebook with your pipeline. Uh, 
provide a target schema, minimum work is zero, maximum work is zero, and then click on create and start your Delta Life Table pipeline. So it will take a few minutes to gather the resources. So I will be back in a couple of minutes. Our pipeline is running. As you can see, we ingested 18 records on the bronze layer. And here now the serial layer is running. We expect to see less records here. Yeah, 13 records because we dropped the duplicates and we also perform data quality checks. So if you click on the serial layer table under data quality checks, you will see that two records failed to abide to our constraints. So we dropped those records and we also deduplicated, remember those four identical records. That's why we have 13 records on the serial layer. So now if we go under catalog, we will be able to see our new tables. Here we have the bronze layer. And we have, you, we can see the sample data. We have 18 records. And here we have the value column, the topic and the process timestamp. And on the serial layer that we have unnested the nested data. Here you can see the original data without the duplicates and without those uh, records that failed to abide to our constraints. So that's why we have only 13 records. Now, the next step is actually create the gold layer. Now, if you noticed on the serial layer, we had streaming Delta Life tables, but on the gold layer, because this is the reporting layer, we have only, we are going to use only live tables. So let me show you the notebook here with uh, live tables. For this one, I used uh, SQL, not PySpark, just for a change. You can use PySpark, whatever you want. And here we create or refresh the uh, table, customer dimension. We are going to create a dimension table. We select distinct from the customer name and the customer country from the serial layer. And we also use uh, an auto increment identity column here custom for customer ID and uh, payment ID, the same for the payment dimension table. We uh, create an identity column, a payment underscore ID would be the surrogate key here, and we select the payment method and the status. We select distinct here, and we also apply constraint if the payment status is not null, then we can drop this record, the same here for the customer dimension. And for the fact table, we join the serial layer, we select order ID, customer ID, payment ID, and the amount because on the fact table, we have the keys and the uh, numerical columns. So here, order ID, which is a key, customer ID, which is a key, payment ID, which is a key, and the amount. And then we perform left order join with a customer dimension based on customer name and customer country. And then a left order join with the payment dimension based on payment method and payment status. Now, if we go back to our Delta Life tables, let's delete this uh, Delta Life table pipeline. Let's create a new one, gold, and provide our new notebook here to create the star schema. Minimum work is zero again, and let's create that. And let's start this DLT pipeline. That would be faster because we only create the gold layer two dimension tables and one fact table. And then we are going to use an analytic, a simple query to group by the data based on our star schema that we created on the gold layer. Okay guys, so the pipeline has run and we created the gold layer where we have our star schemas and data marts. Now, again, we used materialized use simple live tables, not streaming live tables because we still when you have streaming data, you uh, ingest the data up to the serial layer. And for the gold layer, uh, we prefer to use materialized view because we don't know when the data is, will, will stop coming. So we use materialized views and then we refresh the materialized views as frequently as we want. Now, as you can see, we populated the customer dimension table, the payment dimension table and the fact table. So if we go under catalog in now demo here, we have the customer dimension. Let's see what records we have. 
under sample data, you will be able to see the data. We have seven records, uh, a surrogate here, here, customer ID, the customer name, and the customer country. And then we have the payment dimension table. Let's load this one and let's see what we have. Sample data. We have four records. And then we have the fact table where we have only the keys and the numerical the transactional data, which is amount here. So order ID, customer ID, payment ID, and amount. So this is how you can create a simple um, star schema on your gold layer. Now let's go to our last notebook here that we can query our uh, star schema. So we select the customer country and we sum the amount. We select the data from the fact table. Then we use left other join with the dimension table based on payment ID and then left other join with the customer dimension table based on customer ID where payment status equals completed and grouped by customer country. And this is a typical uh, query that a data analyst will or a BI analyst will use to get the data and build his dashboards for the clients. You can see the data here and yeah, this is it pretty much. This is how you can build a whole ETL pipeline from start to finish. As you can tell, it's nothing difficult. Of course, it was a simple data pipeline, but the structure is pretty much the same with a production level pipeline. We consume the data from a Kafka topic and based on the medallion architecture, we build our ETL pipeline. As we mentioned, we could achieve the same thing using simple PySpark. But using Delta Life tables, things become so much easier. You can focus more on the business logic than the technical aspect, which is pretty cool when you need to produce something fast. As always, I will upload the notebooks on GitHub so you can take a look. Please click the like button, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you are new and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.